Hi students, welcome to the channel. Today we will see the third part of the amplitude modulation. And in this video, we will discuss the generation of AM, its demodulation, and different types of AM. So we will begin with the generation of AM. So how we are going to generate an AM signal with the help of a circuit. This C amplifier is the circuit for the generation of an AM signal and uh, we apply the carrier signal at its input as the input signal. The message is applied at the emitter of the amplifier and we get the AM signal at the output of the amplifier. So we must know that the gain of this amplifier varies with a change in its emitter bias voltage. That is, when the voltage at this emitter changes, it will vary the gain of this amplifier. See, here we are applying our message signal at the emitter of this circuit. So, any variation in the amplitude of this message signal will vary the emitter bias voltage at this point. It will vary the gain of this amplifier accordingly. And now, we have to see that the carrier is applied at the input of this amplifier. So, an amplified carrier will be obtained at the output. But at the same time, the gain of this amplifier is varying according to the amplitude variation of the message signal. So, what happens here? While the amplifier amplifies the carrier signal, the gain of this amplifier is continuously varying as the amplitude of the message signal is varying. Thus, this amplifier will vary the gain while amplifying this carrier signal. So, what we get at the output is the carrier with its amplitude is continuously varying according to the variation of the message signal. And what about that signal? That signal is nothing but our AM signal. So, AM signal is nothing but a carrier signal whose amplitude is continuously varying according to the amplitude variation of the message signal. So, such a signal will be obtained at the output of the circuit. So, this is the method of generation of AM signal. This is a very simple method that we discussed here. Now, we will see the process of AM demodulation. Demodulation means we are getting the original message signal from the AM signal. We know that in an AM signal, it contains both the carrier and the message. Such an AM signal is transmitted from the transmitting side and when the signal reaches the receiver, we have to remove the carrier and get the message signal. So, to get the message signal back from the AM signal, we use AM demodulation process. Here you can see the AM signal in which our message signal can be seen at the positive side as well as negative side of the AM signal. So, the message can be seen at the positive side as well as at the negative side of the AM signal. So, during the demodulation process, if we remove the carrier from this AM signal, what happens is that the message signal at the positive side and negative side will be added and they will get cancelled. So, while we remove the carrier, our message signal will also be lost due to this addition. This addition is out of phase addition. That means the message signal at the positive side and at the negative side are of the same magnitude, but they are of opposite phase or they are out of phase. When they are added, they will get cancelled. That is explained here. This is the message signal that we get from the positive side of the AM signal. And this one is the message signal that we get from the negative side of the AM signal. If these two are added, we can see that they are out of phase. So, they will get added to result in zero signal or we will not get any message signal. So, to avoid this, what we can do is the negative side of the AM signal should be removed. For that, what we use here is a rectifier circuit. We know that a rectifier can remove 
the negative side of the signal so if we give this am signal to the input of this rectifier the rectifier will remove the negative half and we will get a signal of this form at the output of the rectifier so we have removed the negative part of the am signal along with we have removed the message signal at the negative side now we have to remove the high frequency carrier from the signal so as to get our message back for that we are using a low pass filter we know that a low pass filter will remove the high frequency signal and it will allow or pass only a low frequency signal so here the low frequency signal is our message signal and high frequency signal is our carrier so the low pass filter will be removing the carrier and at its output we will get the low frequency message signal now this is the method of am demodulation in the am demodulator circuit we have two sections one is rectifier and the second section is low pass filter the rectifier removes the negative side of the am signal so as to remove the message signal at the negative side and the remaining signal we will be applying to a low pass filter and this low pass filter will remove the high frequency carrier from this and finally we get our message signal now we will study different types of am we have a few types of am and uh, for these different types the bandwidth requirement varies similarly the power needed to be transmitted will also vary according to the type of am now we will see the first type it is double sideband full carrier or dsb fc as the name indicates here both the sidebands are transmitted that is why we say it is double sideband transmission both the lower sideband as well as the upper sideband are transmitted uh, along with that the carrier in full is also transmitted and this is nothing but our original am transmission because we are here transmitting both the sidebands along with the full carrier the second type is single sideband or ssb transmission as the name says here we will send only one side band why we are able to send only one side band because we know that in the case of am it has two side bands but both the side bands carry the same information isn't it so if you remove one side band and transmit the other side band even then we can send our information to the receiver the advantage of this method is that since we are transmitting only one side band we need to use only fm we know that in the case of am the required bandwidth is 2 fm the bandwidth of the two side bands since we are transmitting only one side band here we need only half of 2 fm or the required bandwidth is only fm so we are able to save the bandwidth but the disadvantage of this method is that since we transmit only one side band the power contained in the message signal is reduced let me tell you once again here we are transmitting only one side band actually that message is contained in both the side bands in the case of am but here we are transmitting only one side band so the power of the message is reduced now the third type is single sideband suppressed carrier or ssb sc the technique is explained by the name of the technique itself here we are transmitting only one side band and also the carrier is removed since we are transmitting only one side band we are able to save the bandwidth similarly since we are not transmitting the carrier we can save the power of the carrier so here we need to spend the power needed to transmit only one side band so the advantage of this method is that we are able to save power also along with bandwidth but the disadvantage of this method is that for the demodulation purpose we need the carrier at the receiver 
since we are not transmitting the carrier it is difficult to get the carrier at the receiver side the fourth type is single side band reduced the carrier here also we are sending only one side band but the carrier is not fully removed a small portion of carrier or a small power of carrier is transmitted and that will help us to get the carrier frequency at the receiver side a carrier is always required for the demodulation purpose for that we have to generate the carrier using a local oscillator at the receiver side and if we transmit a small portion of the carrier we can easily know the carrier frequency at the receiver side the next method of transmission is vestigial sideband or vsb the characteristic of this method is that here one sideband is fully transmitted and the second sideband is not fully removed from the second sideband we will retain the most significant low frequency part usually in a message signal the low frequency regions are most significant and in the case of video signal if we remove one sideband fully then the power reaching at the receiver will be less and that will badly affect the quality of the video so when we do the tv transmission we have to ensure the quality of the video signal for that we have to send the most significant frequency part of the message fully so what we do here is we will transmit one sideband fully and the most significant portion of the uh, the second sideband will also be transmitted and that most significant part is the low frequency side so that low frequency part of the other sideband will also be transmitted so we can save the bandwidth to some extent here that is its advantage and uh, it it will improve the quality of the signal that reaches the receiver the last type is independent sideband or isb here as in the case of am we are transmitting two sidebands but the difference is that in the case of am both the sidebands carry the same information but here in isb these two sidebands will be carrying two different messages so lower sideband will be carrying one message and the upper sideband will be carrying a totally different message so when we transmit the two sidebands we are actually transmitting two independent information so that is the characteristic of this independent sideband transmission this video we have discussed the generation of am signal with the help of a uh, c amplifier and secondly we have seen am demodulation process the circuit contained a rectifier part and a low pass filter part next we had seen the different types of am depending upon the bandwidth requirement and the power to be transmitted so that's all in this video and thank you